Hi guys, hello from Michigan. I'm back in the D. If you're watching this video, you can see behind me that I'm back in the studio at Empower Radio. So excited to be here. If you're listening and you haven't watched these videos, you can check them out over on our YouTube channel. So go ahead and head over there and you can watch me talk with my hands for the whole 26 minutes. <laughs> but welcome to A Gut Feeling. I'm super excited. Again, today we are continuing with the series, Five Steps to Reduce Bloat. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from these podcasts, even for people that aren't experiencing so much bloat, just saying that it's increasing their energy and they're feeling really good, their skin is clearing up, all of this, these other great, um, you know, different symptom checkers that we have that are improving by using these five steps. Today, we're going to dig into step four, which is intuitive fasting. So I encourage you to go back and listen to all of the other podcasts. If you haven't, it starts with five steps to reduce bloat, and then it goes into step one, step two, step three, and now we are on step four, intuitive fasting. So check those other ones out, and don't forget to click subscribe if you are listening on Spotify or iTunes or on YouTube, click subscribe so you get those notifications and know when it's coming. And if you feel so genuinely called to leave me a review, it's super helpful for others to see if they want to take a listen or not. So I appreciate you guys. All right. So before I dig into intuitive fasting, I mentioned, started talking about my new online self-guided program to break free from bloat. All right. So in combination with these steps to reduce bloat, this four week program is a deep dive way deeper than these podcasts go into these steps that we're already talking about and a lot of extra support recipes, meal plans, discounts off supplements. It's a step by step process to reduce chronic bloating and the best part about it all, and I was really called to create this program because the best part about it all is that it's really inexpensive. If you're listening to this podcast, you can use the code subscriber, all lowercase, to save $30 off of your registration for the program, which makes the program only $99. So four weeks of the program, less than $25 a week, you get this information for a lifetime, which is awesome. You can reference it at any time. It's great to have the digestive toolbox. And if you've been liking these podcasts about reducing bloat, then these have even more information. If these are already helping you, imagine what more information inside the four-week program can go to. So you guys can click that link. Um, there is a link below and um, the digestion, digestion Masterclass. You can also find it on my um, website, JacquelineReneeWellness.com. There's that link if you're watching the YouTube video right below for the Digestion ma Masterclass. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always email me, Jacqueline at JacquelineReneeWellness.com. All right. So fasting, let's get into it because it's a, a very big hot topic. People are using it as a weight loss tool. They're using it for more energy. They're using it to, to help digestion. But fasting can be very overwhelming and often is very personal, very personal. What works for one person may not work for another person at all. And a lot of it has to do with genetics, it has to do with the way that you metabolize food. It has to do with the way that your blood sugar level is, if it needs stabilization, maybe you have hormone imbalance or major gut issues. So it's really, really personal. So I encourage you, if you are entering into a new fasting plan, something that's new for you, that when you do take advice from anyone, you're taking advice from a health professional. If you're going to do extended long fast to make sure that you're checking in with a doctor, getting those stats checked out, maybe some blood work or hormone panel first to make sure what's going to work for you and your situation. Now, there is a way to just generally fast that I'm going to get in later, but my favorite way of fasting is intuitive fasting. Now, what would be a reason that someone might fast? Why would they think about it or look at it? Of course, like we said, looking at losing weight, that's a big reason to fast because we do know in the science of losing weight that if we eat less, 
that it can contribute to weight loss. And when we eat more, it can contribute to weight gain. Simply put, right? But it's not always that simple. So it is about making sure you're getting your needed caloric amount in the day, especially if you're exercising, all right? Now, another reason people might fast is to heal the gut. This is why I'm talking about it today because we talk a lot about reducing bloat. That's a major reason why many of my clients or you know, the women that I work with do fasting on a specific level so that they can heal gut issues and get rid of bloat or constipation, diarrhea, gas, those kind of things to help clear out the gut and the system. Now, fasting can be used in a short term or a long or on a long term basis. So this is where it comes, you know, this is where getting a health professional helps because then you can understand why you might be using it for your cause. You know, other reasons why people fast, and these are extended medical fasts, um, very, very, very helpful for brain disease, cancer, diabetes, these really, really serious uh, diseases and disorders can be healed completely naturally by doing extended water fasts or very simple juice fasting. But again, please go to a medical um, center for it, you know, a retreat center and be under the care of a doctor so that they know if your potassium levels get low, you can get an IV or maybe stop the fast. They know how to introduce food. They know how to take you off food. So definitely helpful. So like I said, today we're talking about daily fasting, um, basic plan, this basic plan to stop, you know, mindless snacking, to stop mindless uh, food consumption, to stop stress eating, to, to help a lot with sugar cravings and carb cravings. Oftentimes, many people that I see are experiencing cravings only because they're eating the foods. So it's repetition and habit more than an actual craving. So today, with the word intuitive, I'm going to be teaching you how to understand that for your own body. So in Eastern medicine, which is my favorite type of medicine, the philosophy is eat when you're hungry and don't when you're not. The hard part about that in, is in our modern lifestyle, we are confused at when we're hungry and when we're not because of the stress, the environmental toxins, our exposure to toxic triggers in food, sugar consumption, those kind of things. They actually alter our brain, our, our signals if, if we're hungry or not. So, you know, if you're very thirsty and you're stressed out, the brain can trigger, okay, well, I need water, but it can often misunderstand that as needing food because of the stress response. So then we're stressed, we're in fight or flight, we eat something, and you know from other podcasts I've said before that if you're stressed and you're eating, your body isn't digesting your food. So it's a vicious cycle. You have undigested food now, and that will cause more sugar and carb cravings. So I like to utilize fasting specifically in this case for anyone experiencing these digestive issues or having major sugar carb cravings so that it helps stabilize their blood sugar and gets their body off the habit of constantly craving this stuff, all right? So here's the thing though. There are some myths around food and diet culture and what we feel like we should be doing to lose weight or to heal our gut or whatever. So I want to go over some of those myths to make sure we debunk them a little bit here um, in, in regards to using it for intermittent fasting. All right. So myth number one, and this is, you know, I have a personal trainer background. So this one was big for me to let go of. And I really held on to this story for so long. But there's a really there's a lot of culture around the fact that you can only build muscle from animal protein and you need this like very strict regimented schedule of specific macronutrients, you know, three hours apart, six meals a day, whatever it is, or even just three, four meals a day, but it has to be so specific. And does this work? Yeah, of course it works for some people. But again, every body is different. But it's it's also not the only option. And it also doesn't work for people with digestive issues because I talk a lot about this digestive system process needs about four hours to digest. If you're constantly eating food every two, three hours, you're definitely going to experience bloat and stomach upset because you haven't allowed that process to finish digesting, especially for people who experience bloat. 
So this is where intuitive fasting comes in. Now, before I get into more on that, let's go to myth two. Myth number two is I need to eat at a certain time to boost my metabolism, right? This is diet culture at its finest. You know, we've been hand fed, oh, okay, you have to eat at a certain time. Your metabolism is, is slowing down with age. This is how it needs to be. Again, another diet myth or potentially does work for some people, but not for all. I encourage people to get in tune with their body because every body is different, just like I said before. And so again, what works for one person may not work for another. So I have a really great male friend who he's the most fit, energetic person I know. He doesn't eat animal protein. He only eats one meal a day, maybe a snack, maybe breaks a fast with a snack, and he goes all day long, and he is in great shape. But I have a female client who is very busy with kids and stressed out, and she only eats one meal a day because that's all she has time for, and she is struggling to lose weight. She has hormonal imbalance. She's dealing with chronic fatigue. So can you see how two people, very different circumstances, doing the same thing with completely different outcomes? This is why it's important to get intuitive. Now, myself, personally, I feel the most strong and fit with three meals without snacking. This has worked for me for a really long time. It makes me feel healthy. It keeps my gut good. It makes me have energy. This works for me. But sometimes I put clients on this and it doesn't work for them. Sometimes they need more meals. It's about understanding intuitively what your body needs. And this is where intuitive fasting comes in. So myth number three and this is a this is a myth this has multiple angles here but this myth is the myth that you are starving or how many times a day a week a month do you say i'm starving first of all not to be crude but you are not starving because i've seen what starving looks like in third world countries and it is not what you are experiencing at all what you're feeling is a dip in your blood sugar level it's going so low because potentially you haven't eaten anything in many, many hours, or you were stressed and forgot, or you're experiencing a blood sugar spike from eating something that is high glycemic, like sugar or white carbs, or you ate really fast, or you overate. This is, these are all things that spike the blood sugar level high. And what's happening is it's triggering uh, a confusing response in your body. It's going to cause, you're going to feel some type of physical discomfort. So if you, you waited too long, you might feel extreme hunger or fatigue or headaches. And if you overate, you may experience fatigue, headaches, tiredness. So it's kind of like very similar what you experience, but one of them you feel starving and one of them you feel stuffed. Now, the thing is, is that you can go days without food and you will definitely survive. It's more mental than it is physical. Mentally getting over not eating is way harder than actually physically getting over. Because usually after a day or a day or two, the person feels fine once they get through that first mental struggle. The, the point of the intuitive fasting that we're going to get into is understanding your body and its symptoms, deciding when the right time to eat food for you is and when the wrong time to eat food for you is, especially if you're stressed or you're not feeling well. And again, this is where intuitive fasting comes in. So as promised, we'll be talking about intuitive fasting. It's the answer to understanding your body. It's the answer to understanding hunger triggers and, and not confusing it with thirst or stress or comfort. Those three right there, thirst, stress, and comfort are three big reasons why people go to reach for food that is not actually being hungry. So it's important to understand those cues versus hunger. Now, we are constantly bombarded by food advertising. You're scrolling through Instagram, everyone's, you know, amazing food that they are putting on their little reels and their IG stories looks delicious. We're being 
you know, posted for ads for the newest protein. We turn on the TV. It's an ad for, you know, a big box, uh, big company for fast food, whatever it is, we're constantly being bombarded. So of course, we're going to be triggered that we are hungry all the time when we're visually seeing food nonstop. So learning to be present and block that out is a really important part of intuitive fasting. The first element is to get quiet and clear. And so this is what I'm saying. If you are feeling bombarded or, or triggered or distracted by food and advertisement, food smells, or, or you know, just this sense of, of wanting food all the time, it's really, really important for you to do breath work and meditation because you could be ruled by food because your body doesn't understand when it's hungry and it's not hungry because of these outside cues. So how do you listen to your body and know what it really needs in the stillness? Meditation in the morning or breath work throughout the day, getting more into the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest to really, really, truly connect with your body and being able to say, am I hungry right now? Are these hunger cues? Or am I distracted? Am I stressed? Am I thirsty? Do I need a nap? Because, you know, that's another thing that you could need is a nap. <laughs> Just like babies, right? When they cry, they're uncomfortable. They need, you know, one of five things. One of them might be food, but there's four other things you might need that may be an option if you're feeling hungry all the time and you're not connected to your body to understand these cues. The second element of getting in tune with your body and using intuitive fasting is to sort of crowd out the noise. And by noise, I mean snacking or excessive food that goes in between meals. When you're eating a meal, it should be very mindful right? I talk about it all the time. Go back to reduce uh, our five steps to reduce below part one. Go back to my first part podcast, Chew Your Food. All the podcasts throughout the history of me doing podcasts are all about eating mindful. If you're running around town, you know, chugging a smoothie, eating almonds, like in the car with a power bar, your body doesn't even really register these nutrients. Your digestive system is pretty shut off at this point. So that food is undigested. It's just going to turn into fat. So start really, really connecting with your body by when you're eating, you're actually just eating and not doing anything else. And you can start to integrate a basic intermittent fasting plan. This is always how I start every client, every person that asks about, asks about it. This is how I start them on a basic intermittent fasting plan. The first thing is, is overnight, your body goes through a full pure detoxification process every night. Your liver regenerates, your lungs regenerate, your heart, everything in your system is regenerating. And that process really thoroughly takes about 12 hours. So the minimum between your last meal and your first meal where you break the fast breakfast should be 12 hours. Now, if you are a person who eats really late before bed, like 10 p.m. before you go to bed, your next meal should not be until 10 p.m., 10 a.m. the next day. If you had your last meal at five, you can have your next meal at five. Now, some people like to push it a little bit, maybe 14 to 16 hours. Again, no problem there if that works for you. You will know intuitively once you start this fast. Now, it's an important side note of understanding this 12-hour process that you really should try to eat three hours prior to bed. When we eat right before bed, it is really hard for our body di to digest. Digestion is shutting down just like the nervous system is shutting down and the immune system is shutting down. We're going to sleep. So when you eat within that three-hour time period before bed, again, you're most likely not digesting your food. Undigested food is hard to absorb. It's hard to absorb your nutrients in it. And again, it can turn into fat. So waiting three hours or eating three hours prior to bed is very important when you're doing a basic intermittent fasting plan. So if you go to bed at 10, your last meal is at 7, and your first meal can be the next day at 7 a.m. or later if you're not hungry right away. 
The third part of that, of a basic intermittent fasting plan, is to avoid snacking. So meals should be at least three or four hours apart without snacking in between. The digestive process from point of insertion in the mouth until it goes into the gut takes about four hours. So you want to make sure that you're allowing that digestive process to, to go through. And you need to do that if you have gut issues. This is the first place to start. So the three elements of a basic intermittent fasting plan is eating 12 hours overnight or waiting to eat 12 hours overnight from last meal to first meal. The second part is to eat three hours before bed. Make sure no food after that. And the third element is to try to avoid snacking in between meals and keep meals about four hours apart. Pretty simple, right? Once you start to do that and eat more mindfully, you will definitely feel a difference and be able to intuitively check into your body on whether you're hungry or not. Most people say their hunger goes down by like 50%. Uh, sugar cravings, carb cravings are almost non-existent. Energy skyrockets just by using those, okay? Now, if you've been doing a basic intermittent fasting plan or you're a little bit more of a, a, a veteran at this, you can move into a longer extended period of fasting. Now, again, it is my duty to remind you that if you're going very extended to use a medical professional or have supervision, but if you want to do a mini fast, like a little three-day fast, you can do this at home. You just have to avoid any excessive activity, cancel the workouts, stay home, rest in bed, nourish your body. And I repeat, stay at home, rest in bed, and nourish your body. Do not attempt to work out on this three-day fast. You know, like that do not try this at home kind of, you know, disclaimer. Use that one here. So if you do the three-day fast, which it's actually only uh, a one-day fast, it's just that the first day and the last day you're eating really light, which I'm going to share with you here, is to stabilize your blood sugar level. And you will feel really amazing. You will have so much energy after it. Now, you want to ease into the fast. The first thing you want to do on that first day is to eat really light soups, things that are very easy to digest, maybe even adapting a vegan diet for that day, low oil, just really, really clean foods. Finish eating definitely three hours before bed, and then you will start your fast that night. You will fast from dinner all the way through the next day. The second day, no eating. You can use water. Um, you could use miso broth or you can use salt, a little bit of pink Himalayan sea salt water if you're just feeling a little faint. And then on the third day to break the fast, the best thing to break the fast is like juicy fruit to eat something really hydrating and fruit that's going and it will taste so amazing more than you've ever loved fruit in your life. So the third day in the morning, you break the fast with fruit and then you continue on your day eating light soups, maybe vegan, low fat, and then you can move forward with a healthy whole food, you know, like similar to a paleo or vegan or whole whole 30 meal plan after that. My favorite is Mediterranean, right? Again, I repeat, make sure you are resting and not working out and nourishing your body through this whole thing because you will go through some fatigue. But by the third day, you'll feel really good and it's it's great. So anything beyond the 24 to 36 hours should be done under me medical supervision. Um, there are amazing clinics all over the United States where you can check into and do 10-day, 20-day, even 30, 40, 50-day fasts as long as you are under that supervision. Now, many people will say like, oh, I love fasting, but when I do it, I lose muscle mass. This is where this awesome product from Thorne comes in called Amino Complex. The Amino Complex is a blend of all the amino acids that we need that we get from food and even eating animal protein. These and these uh, aminos are incredible. They it, they definitely boost enzyme production for digestion. The link is right below if you guys are watching. Hormone regulation, cognitive ability, neurotransmitter balance boosting metabolism, boosting energy. And then of course, around workouts, they support reducing of muscle soreness, energy, increased production, promote healthy blood sugar level, cardiovascular health, all the good things. So you can get this amino complex 
Put it in some water and drink it 30 minutes before your workout and throughout the day after if you want to continue bringing in those nutrients. Now, if you're also going to fast, let's say you're just going to skip dinner, you're not feeling very well intuitively and you think it's a good time for you to do some fasting, you can have some aminos and that will just help keep your muscle mass without having any food. Intuitive fasting is very, very important for people that experience a lot of health issues because it gets you to know that if your body is off, you don't actually need food, you just need rest and to give your digestion time. So I hope these tips have been really helpful for you to incorporate intuitive fasting. If you have any questions, you can comment below or you can send me an email. Of course, Jacqueline at Jacqueline Renee Wellness. Get at me anytime to go over whatever you need to incorporate this in. Now, don't forget that code is only valid for a short amount of time for Digestion Masterclass. Use code subscriber at checkout for the Digestion Masterclass, the four weeks we do go over fasting and food combining a lot in that course. So it will be very beneficial for you. Thank you guys so much for listening to step four. I look forward to showing you step five, which will bring it all home, bring it all together next time on A Gut Feeling.